Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino and in this video we're going to talk about the three different techniques that will be used to analyze the purity of your aspirin products. Alright, so the first one we're going to talk about is the iron test. Uh, so for this test you're going to need a test tube rack and you're going to need three test tubes, clean uh, but not necessarily dry. Uh, you'll need a scupula or a micro spatula will do and we're going to analyze both the aspirin products you synthesized as well as reagent grade. We're going to be testing them with a solution of iron 3 chloride. Uh, so this test is qualitative in nature. We're not going to have to worry about measuring anything carefully. Uh, so we'll start with this um, reagent grade aspirin first. You want a really small amount, like the tip of a scupula. You do not need a lot of material to run this test. I probably have more than I need here. That's definitely more than I need, but I'm going with it anyway. I'll put that in the test tube. Get that out of the way. And we're going to add iron 3 chloride to it. Uh, the iron 3 chloride's in brown bottles. It's light sensitive. It's kind of like that orangish color. We're going to add that to our product. Swirl it around a little bit to try to get it to dissolve. And you can see that it did not really change color in the presence of the reagent grade acetyl salicylic acid. Um, that means that you've got a really clean sample. Um, there aren't any impurities present. Um, you're going to repeat those uh, that same test with your purified aspirin and the crude product. Um, again, really, really small amounts, especially those of you who did not make a lot of product. Um, and you're going to observe different colors. Um, again, I don't want to ruin any surprises for you, but if it does not change color and it stays that same brownish color that it began with, that's an indication that you have a very pure uh, product. In addition to the iron test, we're also going to be performing a melting point analysis test. Um, Due to the fact that acetyl salicylic acid has a melting point of 136 degrees Celsius, we can't use a hot water bath, so we're going to use a different setup. All right. Uh, this, of course, is a quantitative test as you're going to be measuring numerical data. So when you go to set it up, make sure that the large ring is on your ring stand and that it's like opposite the base of the ring. Um, otherwise, it's going to be unstable and fall over. You're going to put your clay triangle on top of the large ring. And we've got this weird like aluminum cylinder. It's got a hole on one side, nothing on the bottom. We're going to put it with the whole side up. Um, and we're going to be using a Bunsen burner to heat it. So this aluminum block is going to get really, really hot. Uh, you don't want a ton of space between your setup and the Bunsen burner flame, so bring it down. Definitely don't do this after you started to heat it. You're going to burn yourself. And finally, we're going to be using a digital thermometer to make life a little bit easier for you. It's got that long cord and then um, like a metal coated probe. Put the probe in the little hole. Make sure that those wires are out of the way of the flame. Kind of tuck them off to the side somehow. Um, obviously, if those catch on fire, they're going to break the thermometer. Again, we're going to be testing all three samples. Reagent grade, which is what I'm using now. Same deal, really small amount of sample. You don't need a lot of it. Get that on there. Again, probably more than I need. I'll discard the remainder. And I'm going to test all three samples at the same time. We're not going to have time in class to heat this up and cool this down more than once. Um, so I'll have my, in this case, purified sample, put a little bit on there. Again, don't overdo it. Don't use a ton of your sample for these tests. You're going to need it for a titration. And I'm going to put the crude aspirin product up there as well. Now, you probably notice these are all white solids. Um, so telling them apart is going to be difficult. You might want to draw a little diagram in your notebook, like a circle, and then label what is what in relation to the thermometer hole. All right, let's see if I can do this. Really good camera work here. Uh, so this is what it looks like on top of the melting point apparatus, the big aluminum cylinder. Um, you probably want to like tamp down your solids. Otherwise, you'll have like an air pocket, and then the air underneath the sample will heat up, but it won't melt your, um, your products, and then you get really weird looking melting points. And just like the last time we did melting point analysis, you want to record the initial melting temperature and the final melting temperature and take all of the digits that the uh, electronic thermometer is giving you. Right. We'll talk about the calculations in just a little while. Last but not least, we'll analyze purity using titration. And this is just going to enable us to analyze the relative purity of the crude and purified products. Uh, this is, of course, a quantitative technique. You're going to be measuring volumes carefully and recording them. Um, 
So I don't want to spend too much time talking about this. We've done plenty of titrations over the course of the semester. Uh, you'll be doing three rounds of them, uh, standardization, crude, and purified product. For all of the titration trials, um, our titrant, the thing that goes in the burette, is going to be the sodium hydroxide solution that you prepared. We're going to standardize the sodium hydroxide with KHP as our analyte. So that means KHP is going to be in the Erlenmeyer flask. Um, remember, sodium hydroxide absorbs water, so we need to standardize. And we'll also titrate the crude products and the purified products. You're going to try to run three trials of each um, and really just see how uh, much aspirin should be there based on the mass and then how much aspirin is there based on uh, the titration data. So that calculation, a little different from what we've done so far. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so before we cut the video off, let's, uh, let's look at some calculations. Uh, really no calculations to do with the iron test or simply just looking to see uh, what color the iron chloride solution turns if it does in fact turn color. Um, so we're going to use our melting point analysis. The accepted value, the actual melting point of acetylsalicylic acid is around 136 degrees Celsius. Please don't make the mistake of thinking that because we're using uh, digital thermometers this time around that they are somehow of better quality than the little like analog glass thermometers we've used earlier in the semester. They're not great and that's why we end up looking at the reagent grade directly instead of just using the literature value. Um, I don't really want to walk through the whole calculation, but I'll just remind you that the percent difference is equal to, um, we're always looking at ending melting point temperatures. Trying to figure out when the material is starting to melt can be subjective. I think it's a little bit easier using the aluminum block than it was the hot water bath, but still it can be difficult. Uh, looking at the sample and seeing that it's completely a puddle is a lot easier for most people to see. So we're going to take, uh, we'll do one for crude, we'll repeat it for the purified. I take the crude final MP melting point. I'd subtract out the reagent. I'll use that as like my actual final MP. Divide by the reagent final melting point. And of course, sorry, it's squeezed in there at the bottom. Uh, multiply by 100. Uh, be careful with your significant figures, uh, but you should have to do this calculation twice, once for the crude product and once for the purified product. Um, we're going to be using an acid-based titration to assess purity as well. Um, so if we were to write out a reaction, and I'm not going to do that right here, uh, but the mole-to-mole ratio of sodium hydroxide to aspirin is 1 to 1. For every mole of sodium hydroxide that you use to titrate, there must have been a mole of aspirin present. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Aspirin, acetylsalicylic acid, is a weak acid. So we're going to be using the indicator phenolphthalein. I never spell this correctly. That's pretty close. Um, phenolphthalein, as hopefully you remember, is clear in an acidic solution. So when we add it to our KHP solution, the crude aspirin product, the purified aspirin product, um, it will not turn colors. And then as we add the sodium hydroxide, it should turn pink. We want to stop the titration at a very pale pink endpoint. Try not to overdo it. Uh, you should be able to answer a question like letter C, no problem. You've already prepped your sodium hydroxide solution, so this showed up in your theoretical calculation. Um, we've walked through calculations like letter D before as well, um, in particular the antacid titration lab. So you can go back and look at your lab manual for that. That will tell you that the answer is 0.144 molar. We're going to need that number later, so you can use that to check your work. All right. Uh, the last three parts of this question are really what we're going to be using to calculate what we're calling percent purity. Uh, so we've got if 0 0.190 grams of purified product is used for titration, how many moles of acetylsalicylic acid, how many moles of aspirin, are theoretically present, assuming the purified product is only acetylsalicylic acid? So based on the mass, can we figure out how many moles of aspirin are present? And of course we can. So we'll take our mass, 0 0.190 grams. We'll divide it by the molar mass of aspirin. One mole, I'm just going to use ASP for aspirin, is equal to, sometimes it gets stubborn and doesn't want to write. Oh, that's perfect timing for that. 
All right, there we go, it's cooperating again. Uh, 180.16 grams. So you can go through and do the calculation and be careful with sig figs. This is giving the theoretical number of moles that are present. If every last molecule that you are putting um, in for the titration, every last molecule of that 109, uh, 0.190 grams is aspirin. Um, then we're going to see what's actually present based on the titration. We're told only 6.78 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution using the calculation we, uh, concentration we calculated up in 4D was, neutral, was required for neutralization. How many moles of acetylsalicylic acid are actually present according to the titration data? All right, so we know we've got a 0 0.144 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. We can calculate how many liters are there by dividing by a thousand. If you want to show it in multiple steps, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to condense. And I know that for every one mole of aspirin, it requires one mole of sodium hydroxide to neutralize it. And again, I can go through and do the calculation, careful again with sig figs, and come up with my actual moles. Okay, we're going to use this formula, percent purity, the actual moles of aspirin. So again, that's from the titration divided by the theoretical moles. Uh, this is like from the mass to moles to conversion. Multiply by 100 since it's a percent and we'll calculate a percent purity. Um, this is kind of a, a rough way to do it, but it gets the job done. One note to make. Um, it is possible to get a percent purity over 100%. Um, so let's say, I mean, this isn't the answer, but let's say you go ahead and you perform this calculation with your own data and you come up with something being 116% pure. Uh, hopefully, like right off the bat, that number doesn't make sense to you. How can something be more than 100% of a substance? Uh, so when we go to evaluate percent purity, we're going to look at absolute distance from 100. So something that is 116% pure that does not mean that it's extra pure. It uh, means we must have some other impurities in there that have like made it um, like more moles of aspirin present than we anticipated. Um, so that is approximately equal to something that is about 84% pure. That's at the same distance from 100. Uh, so you don't get super excited if you calculate something that's like 163% pure. That is not a great clean product. That means that you've got impurities. That's approximately 37% pure using this technique. All right, I think that's it. Yeah, that wraps up the calculations. Uh, it would be great when you came into class next week that you have these calculations finished. Um, again, I'm sorry I'm asking you to watch a video, uh, but we just don't have time to uh, squeeze in a discussion and still have enough time in lab to do all three of these tests. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next week.